Hi everyone, welcome to my lockdown studio. Um, I've moved the studio around a bit actually, so I'm in the corner. Uh, <laughs> um, I promised the other night when I was doing a Zoom class for Crafty Monkeys, and um, we did the Zoom craft, uh, the Zoom class on um, the applique hound called Waggletails, and I said that I would show them how I would turn my applique and what I would do with it, and I've done this. I hope you can see that. Um, so I've, um, I mean, if anyone's been to a, any of my um, draw, stitch and paint or my applique classes, um, I've before I've done it in very sort of like more country fabrics. This time I've sort of like zinged up the colour, sort of like made it pop a little bit more. So I've done a much more instead of a calico background. This time I've done a like a white linen background. Um, my colours are much more sort of poppy, zingy, nice and bright. And then what I've done is. Um, I've made this border so I'm going to show you how to actually make this sort of improvised border around the um, the cushion and how to make just a very simple cushion cover which is uh, just an envelope cover for that so um, yeah watch this and I'll show you how to do it here is the hound design that I'm going to be working with um, it is on some nice white linen. It's got a lot of big white patch all the way around it. It's a nice big board around it. But if I think about over a cushion, so this is my cushion pad over a cushion. It's all going to look a bit plain, really. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to add a nice border all the way around that. And so in the design stage at the moment, I'm going to pick out, try and pick out some of the colours that I've used when I've been putting the hound together. So I'm going to pick out a little bit of the orange. I've got some of this like spotted bits of fabric. Stuff. And these literally are, they're all, all they are is just scraps that I'm going to put around the outside. Um, and I'm, I'm going to just join them with what's called improv piecing really it's just sort of haphazardly putting them together and then we're going to create the borders to go around the outside so it should work quite well with the image in the middle but we need to make a calculation of how much the center is and how much the borders are going to be so if I put that to one side for a minute and I'll tell you how I calculated that um, image first how much of the image do I want to save because I'm going to cut this out nice and square so I could have it as a long portrait or I could have it as a square block so if we think about the width of it is six by nine so I could have a literally a six by nine with a, um, a seam allowance and that could be in the center of the cushion but I want to save some of the white because I think the white round it actually makes the uh, the image look quite nice and important so what I'm going to do is think about what's the sort of widest I want to be over the cushion. So I'm going to go for 11 by 11 and that will give me enough, I think, enough white around the image that then that makes that look and will stand out before I then start doing the quilts around the quilted uh, border. Put that to one side. How big is my cushion pad? So this cushion pad is 18 inches by 18 inches. I'm actually going to make the cushion cover 17 by 17. That's because I like my cushion covers to be nice and plump. I like my cushions to be nice and firm rather than a bit sort of sort of flat and square. It's entirely down to you. But if I take off an inch, I'm going to make that cushion cover that much smaller. So all this cushion is going to then plump up inside. So a little bit of calculation. I've drawn this out. <laughs> nice and um, sort of nice and big so everyone can see it but you could just do if you wanted to like just a little um, sketch at the side of working out what where the border is where the image sits what's the the um, calculations of the um, the measurements so I've done here is my 17 by 17 um, inch square which is going to be my pattern for my um, cushion my image in the middle is 11 by 11 that leaves me a border of 3 by 3 each side top and bottom side by side so 3 3 inch 3 inch 3 inch image 11 by 11 I'm then going to make the um, the top border say if I imagine this is top but this is top and bottom so we're going to have that just a shorter piece there and there so it's going to be the length of the image by the depth of the border this is going to be the 17 by the depth of the border now don't worry about that too much because if you've drawn it out to scale all you have to do when you're cutting your um, pieces to make the cushion is you just have to measure them 
and then just add your seam allowance all the way round. Now that's the key thing. Don't measure them and cut out exactly what the measure is because you've got to sew these all together. So you've got to decide what your seam allowance is and then um, cut it out. We'll get to that bit in a minute. But first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to start piecing all these little bits, these scraps of fabrics together to make an improv border. So for this improv piecing, we need lots of straight edges. So if we've got a straight edge like that, we can use it. Um, we'll probably cut that little piece off up there. If you can just separate that out. I'm just gonna square that off. Don't need that. It's just like a little bit that we don't need. Oops, some scissors, cut that off. Um, that bit, nice and straight. It makes it easier if it's got checks on. Um, so we're just gonna cut that nice and straight down there because we want straight edges to stitch together. So what I'm gonna do is we're going to use our straight edges to stitch together. So I'm gonna stitch that to there. And I'm just gonna run a machine line down there, quarter of an inch, I think, quarter of an inch seam allowance, and then we're gonna turn it out. Then I'm gonna cut again, and then we might add another little bit on. And then just add until this fabric gets much more bigger and bigger, and then we can cut it out. But I'll show you how we're gonna do that. So I've joined that piece to there quarter of an inch seam allowance pressed it over to one side and I'm going to find another straight side to do it so I press that straight there so what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to go down that side down there to actually make that straighten this side up doesn't have to be at right angles it can be at an angle like that which I think I will do because that actually just adds a little bit more interest to it so I'm joining all the pieces up and what I'm going to join across here I think I'm going to join I'm going to join that piece along there and then I'm going to join then I'm going to cut and then I'm going to join another piece along there so you can see that it starts to almost become what I would call like crazy paving but as long as you've got a straight edge to join on you don't join on a curve because then that'll give you lumps and bumps but just straight edges and I'm going to carry on I'm going to make a big lot of work myself cutting it up moving it around and then I'll show you how I'm going to then use it for the borders so here we have all the bits pieced together. Now, um, you can see they're quite big chunks at the moment, and I've tried to keep an idea of the original designs, thinking about what colours and the proportion of colour within the design. Now I've then pieced this all together, and I've squared it up. One thing just to just go over with this is just check when you're stitching it together that you try and get the seams, like seams not to sort of bunch up. On here is one bunch up there. Now, if you can see that, can you see how that, as it's stitched through, it's sort of bunched up a little bit like that. I'm going to leave that for this one because I haven't done it anywhere else. And um, But if you keep doing that, I would unpick it and get them all your seams to lay in one way because it'll just save on bulky areas. So you want to try and get them one to go one way and one the other so that you haven't got um, like that, like a bit of a bunched up area. Right, next... In fact, as I've got this size, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually just cut a diagonal across here. So I'm just going to go literally a diagonal with my blade and I'm just going to go like that, across, like that in two halves. And in fact, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn that around like that and I'm going to then stitch. Actually, no, what way am I going to do it? I'm going to do it this way. I'm going to do it like that. That's the way I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it like that. And then I'm going to cut again and I'm going to turn it again. As long as I end up with a red, sort of a, a, a square or a rectangle. In fact, I think you call this the way it's looking at the moment. Is it a rom rhombus, rhombus or something like that? Where it's slightly off centre. But you're going to square it up all again. But you're just going to cut it one more time and then cut it another time. So you start really these sort of sections become much more mixed up. And then we'll be ready to start cutting our strips for our borders. So here we are. Um, what I've done now is I've actually cut all my strips to the sizes that I wanted, remembering that I need to add a seam allowance. Now I've added a seam allowance um, either side. So I've added um, a quarter of an inch and a quarter of an inch there and there where I need to um, join it together. And again, I've cut out my central panel and I've added a quarter of an inch all the way round. Now, a quarter of an inch for you might be too little. So you might want to add half an inch all the way around or half a centimetre or a centimetre or full centimetre. You need to make your calculations to what suit you. Um, so I'm going to be, I'm a bit tight with my seam. So I've added just a quarter of an inch all the way around here. Now I've got to join this up with the machine. So I'm going to join the top, 
to the bottom there. I'm going to join those two borders there. So I'm going to just put them like that. I'm going to machine there and then press them open. Then I'm then going to present with that piece and open that. Square it all up if it needs a little bit of squaring up. And then we're ready for almost coming up towards the end for when we're going to do some um, wadding behind it and some shadow quilting. So now what I've done is I've layered up my um, cushion front and I've layered it up with a um, and I've cut it slightly bigger as well so about um, half an inch bigger all the way around so we've got within the layer in the middle there we've got what they call it's bump and I've seen it named as domit or waddings but it's only fine I use a synthetic one but you can get a, um, a cotton or a wool one that you can put in between it's just fine and it just gives it a little bit of body to it and it helps because we're going to quilt around shadow quilt around the hound and we're going to shadow quilt around this bit here and I might do a bit of quilting uh, stitch quilting in amongst some of these sections as well it just gives it a little bit more body for the stitches to sort of like disappear into as it goes along um, and then the backing layer is just really it's just a fine bit of um, actually I've used poly cotton um, you could use pure cotton or I've used poly cotton on the back here so that's just to stitch through and just gives that nice backing to it as well um, I'm going to quilt um, or um, stitch and I'm going to use little like little canter stitches all the way around little running stitch I'm going to use this lovely green and I'm going to use this orange because I think these two put in their perlay threads and I think they pick out well with the green with uh, what's in his um, details and the orange in the border and a little bit of orange on him as well so we're going to do that where I'm going to quilt is I'm going to use this friction pen and I know some of you go oh what is he doing I don't mind using a friction pen I know sometimes the um, if you use the friction pen on maybe a dark color or something it leaves a, a line um, I'm going to use it on the white mainly um, and the real other thing is that the, co the colour can come back or the mark can come back if it drops below mine um, I think five degrees and below and people who have taken these or flown them out to different countries because they've been in the hold in the plane they've come back and the lines are on them well to get rid of them you only have to either put a hot hair dryer over them or iron them again and it disappears and I do use a friction pen quite a lot you could use a bit of chalk if you wanted to you could do it completely by eye but I find I tend to if I do things by eye I tend to wander so I do like a line to follow um, you could use there is like another fabric pen that you can use which is like a water one where you just wet it and it disappears or it just fades over time as well so it's entirely down to you what I would say if it's a really precious piece of work is test it first test it draw on it walk away leave it iron it if it needs ironing see what happens if it leaves any kind of mark that you don't like then don't use it Okay, let's talk about shadow quilting. So we're going to go, just shadow quilting is exactly what it says, is we're just going to create a shadow, a line around the body of the hound. So I'm just going to quilt literally, and that's about half an inch all the way round with my pen I'm drawing, and that's going to be my guideline. And actually, I'm going to just take it there. And what I'm not going to do is I'm not going to actually quilt along the bottom. I'm going to just leave that as a quilted line there. The other thing I'm going to do is I'm then going to quilt a couple of stitch lines in the orange and the green all the way around. And I'm going to, in fact, use my grader square. Or you can use a, um, a quilter square or anything. And I'm just going to come in on this, actually. It's, it would be um, a quarter of an inch like that. And I'm just going to draw the first one in all the way round. See this, if I did that by eye, I'd be going a bit wibbly wobbly, which but it's better to have a ruler and draw it in and then you can then follow that. So I'm going to do, that's my first line, one line, and that's going to be in one colour. And I think we're going to do one maybe just in between. So I'm going to do one even narrower. So almost like an eighth of an inch around the border. And I think that as two rows of stitching could look quite nice around him. And that just almost like frames him. So I'll get back to that when I've drawn around it and then I'll start the stitching and show you that. I'm ready to start doing some shadow quilting. So I've um, taken a length of the green um, perlay thread I've only done a length just past my elbow 
Um, there's no point in having reams and reams of thread because you think you won't have to change it so often. In fact, it'll take you longer to actually be pulling all that thread through and there's a chance it'll get knotted up. So you just have a much, a little overhang, single thread to probably just past your wrist and then the rest just past your elbow. I'm then going to put a knot in the end of it, just one single knot, and we're going to pull the knot through. So what we're going to do, maybe start at the end down here, and I'm going to put the needle in. Actually, I'm going to bring it down just before where I want to stitch and come up through like that. And then I'm going to actually, let's just take that end off there. So it's just a little knot there with the end. And I'm actually going to just pull it through till it pops through. Now you can make what you can do, your first sort of, um, hole that you make you can sort of wiggle it around with your um, with your needle to actually make it so it pops through so that now has disappeared inside so you've disappeared the knot within the layers it, I've not gone through to the other side the knot is in there and just holding there then I can start stitching so I'm equally stitching almost like an eighth of a width if that and then the eighth of width underneath right through to the other side and up again pulling through, not pulling through really tight, just keeping the tension quite nice. And I'm going to go an eighth, an eighth under, an eighth on top, an eighth under, an eighth on top. So it's not really, really tiny stitches. If you prefer smaller stitches, then do them. Everyone, it's like a signature really, everyone has their own stitch size that they prefer. I suppose being a man, man's hands and things like that, I like quite nice large stitches. But if smaller little stitches are preferable for you, then do them. So I'm going to carry on round and I'm going to do that all the way round the outside and then I'll show you when I get to the end how I then pull it back through. Right so now I've, I've got to the end and now I've got to sort of finish it off and lose the knot inside. So I'm going to probably, I think the best thing is to go to the other side. So I'm going to go through to the other side and then Remember I said about making a little hole. So because it's actually a bit finer as well, because it being poly cotton, I'm going to just open up the hole that I've made with my needle. And then I'm going to create a knot. So I'm going to then just create a knot by just threading my needle through. And the knot I'm going to close down quite close to the, to the fabric there. And then I'm going to then snip it and with the blunt end of the needle I'm going to pull on the thread Oops. I'm going to pull on the thread this way to pull it through back on itself so we don't have the Let's even that up a little bit more so now that knot is actually stuck right in between the sandwiches. So I've pulled it back through, so it's hidden in there. Okay, I think looking at it now, I'm going to do, um, another, I'm going to do another shadow. I'm going to do another shadow. So I'm going to then draw again around here. I'm going to draw, get probably about like the similar distance, maybe about an eighth of an inch all the way around. And this time I'm going to do it in orange. I'm going to do that. And then I'm going to do the same with the borders around there. Well, I forgot to mention, actually, when I've done, when I've layered up, I have actually tacked the whole, whole um, piece down. And um, it just sort of, by tacking it, I did a tacking stitch just around the image. And then I've done another tacking stitch just around the edge there. And um, it actually stabilizes it, holds it all together. It's much easier for sewing and it just stabilizes it. I see I've left a pin in there. Take, I take the pins out, especially when you're quilting because pins will find your flesh and they will pierce it. And DNA and textiles aren't usually the best of friends. So there are ways of getting blood out of things, but that's for another session. There you go. So now you can see where I've done some, um, just some stitching, some running stitches or canther stitches in that perle. So round shadow, round the hound um, figure itself, round this border here. And then I've gone into some of the squares, although they're not squares, are they? They're actually like sort of mis misshaped squares and rectangles and triangles. And some of them I've picked out in some of the, in some of the contrast um, thread. So I've just done it around here. Um, I've just done sort of orange on the green, orange on the brown, 
green on the orange and sort of try to mix it up a little bit but i've not done every single one because i think that would just be too much so next to do is actually i'm going to release all my tacking threads now so i can take the tacking threads actually i'm going to take the tacking threads away from the central one but i am going to actually leave the well, around the edge i'm going to leave the edge tacking stitches in because that'll just help keeping all the layers together when we actually um make the cushion the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just use my um, roller cutter and I'm just going to square all this up. So I'm just going to cut all the excess away and make sure that it's quite square. And then I'm going to make a backing and I'm going to make the backing from another piece of white linen. So I'm going to do an envelope fold at the back, which I can show you. And I'm going to do the back in some white linen. So now I've trimmed it all down. So I've squared it all up and I'm ready to put my backing on. So I've done a linen backing and I've probably given myself a task because linen does have a tendency to slightly warp a little bit. But anyway, you'll see what I mean when you um, when I put it down. Um, so first of all, you need to do I cut two pieces of linen the same square size as this cushion front. And with the first piece, I folded it up like so hemmed it here and then i've done a nice decorative stitch along the bottom i put right sides down so where the hem is and the um the inside is going to be there on top so we're putting everything in the right order so then next you need to put the next piece which again is the same size piece and i've just folded it over a couple of times and hemmed it here and then i can position it i've positioned it where I want the envelope to be in here and then I've trimmed off anything that I don't need in this far end down there. Um, I'm going to pin all the way round. So I'm going to put my pins in a horizontal position like this. I don't tend to put them in a vertical. I just find they just get in the way when I'm stitching. If you put them in horizontally, um, they actually are easier to pull out as you're stitching along. The only time I would probably put um, the pins in on a horizontal would be if it was a finer fabric and I wanted to keep the pin holes within the if it marked the fabric um, within the seam um, otherwise I don't these aren't these pins aren't going to mark this fabric they're soon iron out and it would just be so much quicker to iron them like that okay so that's that um, I chose an envelope back because I thought with the bulk of, you know, of here, I didn't really want to put an inserted zip, though it is possible. Um, the other thing that I thought, well, you could do is it could be piped, but I think that would be over gilding the lily. I don't think it needs any more decoration than what it's already got. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to machine with my seam allowance. For me, it's quarter of an inch. You might do half an inch. You might be using centimetres, but be consistent with your seam allowance. And I'm going to just go all the way round. And if there's anything that needs trimming, off at that point I will trim turn it inside out and then we should have a pillow cover so that's it done look all done um I'm really pleased with the way it's turned out actually I'm pleased that I've started to change the color of the applique design um it's one of my designs and there's several more on my Etsy shop um, and then is introducing this border and this I really enjoy doing this sort of improvised border sort of all piecing and the stitching so um, have a go um, hopefully this is sort of inspired you to do something a bit different um, I think it's quite fresh it's quite zingy um, quite good for the sort of something to do towards the end of the summer so um, please post and send me all your examples of this workshop um, so I look forward to seeing it bye for now